We have uh, short statements and then we'll take uh, questions. Um, basically, an update on the uh, peace drive from uh, all areas of Libya meeting at Sirt and then moving eastward towards Jdabia and Benghazi. We had a very unfortunate incident today. Just as they warned, the uh, armed militias did indeed attack the peace convoy today with fire, with bullets. Around 29 uh, people uh, were injured. Uh, no one was killed, fortunately. This is a very cowardly act witnessed by thousands, thousands of people. Witnessed by thousands of people who were in the peace convoy. The incident took place just before the town of Benjouad, which is 150 kilometers east of Sirte. The army did open way for the peace convoy to go through, and it kept a very safe and clear distance of the main roads. When uh, the convoy reached Hrawa, which is about 90 kilometers, the army got information, intelligence, that rebels were gathering around the town of Benjouad to possibly ambush the peace convoy. So the army, uh, an army representative, uh, went to the main road and talked to the peace convoy saying, you are, not, you are now 90 kilometers away from Sirt. At 150, just before Benjouad, you might be targeted by the armed militias. Many people decided to turn back and go home safely. It was their right, and this was the advice of the army. But a group of bosses, uh, they refused and they said they wanted to go ahead because they believed in what they were doing. And it happened that many of them uh, had relatives and immediate family members in Benghazi and other eastern cities. Uh, these were the people who were targeted uh, and fired at. Some people were able to escape and run because the attack from, was from the front. So they, were, they had enough time to go back quickly. One of them was actually a Libyan journalist working for a Libya TV channel. And um, many people had the attack uh, filmed on mobile phones, who hopefully soon will have some footage for that. Uh, Mr. Abdul Hafid Roga, a member of the so-called Transitional Council of Benghazi, a few days ago made a statement that they would fire at and attack any peace convoy, any convoy of any kind coming towards them. He did indeed uh, go through with his threat. No one, of course, in the West or in the international, so-called international community ever condemned his statement or warned him not to go through with it. So he did go through with it. Also, uh, the airstrikes are continuing with uh, full power in Tripoli, Sirte, and Sabha. The terror people are living under, the fear, the tension is everywhere. And these are civilian people, populations that are being terrorized every day. Yesterday in the city of Sirte, a fishing harbor, your colleagues in Sirte will be able to verify this. We have around 20 or so journalists in Sirte at the moment, with uh, 30 or more of mainly European NGOs and activists. Uh, a fishing harbor, a very civilian one, nothing military or quasi-military about it, in the middle of uh, the small town, the small city of Sirte, was attacked and three sailors were killed of 
uh, the local population, there were three Libyans, because usually we, have, we would have many Egyptians working in the fishing industry in Libya. Uh, the, but these three uh, victims were verified to be young Libyan men from uh, the town of Sirte. Uh, hopefully, your colleagues in Sirte uh, tomorrow will be able to. They will be able to uh, film their funerals and meet with their families, and examine the location that was uh, attacked. We believe that the continuation, the unnecessary continuation of the airstrikes. It's just a, um, a, a plan to make the uh, Libyan government and Libyan state in a weak negotiation position. Uh, the NATO is prepared to kill people, destroy uh, army training camps and army check checkpoints and other locations just so it would, it would have a better political negotiation position in, in the days to come. The rebels are making their advance, and no one is stopping them, and no one is even talking to them or saying, where are you going, or why are you taking offensive positions and attacking the Libyan army and Libyan cities? We leave this for you to judge. Thirdly, the, um, uh, in the last few days, many officials from uh, Niger, Chad and Mali, uh, the highest would be the president of Chad, Idris Debi, um, made a very revealing statement of many other revealing statements made by other officials around, and they all said that they have noticed that Al-Qaeda um, activities are increasing, and that Al-Qaeda is getting more and more powerful because it's getting money weapons, logistics, and locations from Libya. So they are moving into the south of Libya, and they are acquiring this money and weapons, and they are going back to where they came from, and then they are they're returning to Libya. Um, and these are statements made by other countries, by Mali, uh, Chad, and Niger. I think it goes also to prove that what we have been warning about took place. It's the same Iraqi scenario again. Uh, another, another statement, quick one. I'll, I'll try to be as short as possible so you could have a space for questioning. And um, uh, Algeria announced that it, it, it killed an Algerian uh, armed man, fully armed. Uh, with explosion, uh, explosives, uh, who was heading uh, towards Libya, refused to stop, um, and they had to kill him. He had the look, the behavior, and the manners of Al-Qaeda affiliate. He was fully uh, armed with the explosive belt around his body and everything. So he was trying to get into Libya. <clears throat> Again, we uh, insist that the uh, Security Council never allowed any country in the world to prevent us from getting fuel, food, and medicine. This is the situation now. We need the world through you to listen to this. They are starving the Libyan population to, to, to get Libya on its knees to beg for mercy. It's a very simple plan. We can see it happening in front of our eyes. We need the world to be aware of it. They are trying to weaken our spirits. They are not trying to protect civilians. You don't need to destroy Libya and starve the Libyan population to protect civilians in Benghazi. You could easily protect civilians in Benghazi or anywhere by having a ceasefire and judge it on the ground. Very easy, very simple. Uh, ships of fuel, food, and medicine are not being allowed to come into uh, our seaports. Uh, we don't see any security meetings to discuss this, Security Council meeting. We don't see any UN missions. We don't see any European Union meetings to discuss the situation. Why is it that uh, the NATO countries are going beyond the mandate of the Security Council? Uh, another thing we would like to 
assure our brothers from Egypt and Tunisia that they are safe in this country and all foreigners that they are safe in this country, except, of course, the parts that we do not control, so we are not legally responsible for what happens to them, but we wish them safety and security everywhere in Libya. But as for us, the uh, areas of Libya that are under co our control or have been liberated recently, all foreigners, and especially our neighbors of African or uh, Arabic origins are all safe. We, we provide them with security and they, they cannot, and we should not, and we will not involve them in any conflict of any.